Man, we have an amazing God, don't we? We have an amazing church too, don't we? I want to honor uh, a few people um, here as we get started. And, uh, and first of all, just being Memorial Day, I think it's important that we honor those that have either uh, served in the military, if you've lost someone uh, overseas in the, in the military or, or wherever it was that, that they, uh, they passed from this life to the next. Um, anybody who's, who's associated, if you've been in the military, you've got a, a brother, or sister, somebody that's been in the military, we just stand for a moment here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. My dad served in the Army just for four years, but it was a, a foundational point in his life uh, to, to serve our country, to uh, uh, learn from the ways of the military. A powerful thing in his life. It's always been an important aspect uh, of our life, uh, appreciating the military, appreciating their, their service, laying it on the line, uh, being willing to, to give it all if necessary. Amen? Uh, we are so blessed to live in America, uh, to have the kind of um, leadership for hundreds and hundreds of years that have led us to the place where we are today. It, you know, it's hard for me to fathom sometimes thinking back to, you know, America, people coming over and there being, you know, nothing here, no roads, right? No buildings. And just a few hundred years later, you know, we turn and, and we look around and, and we lead the world in so many ways because of the blessing of the Lord, because of the faithfulness of those before us, both to the Lord and to one another. Amen. And so I pray that, amen, thank you, amen. And I, and I, I pray that, you know, as we celebrate Memorial Weekend, um, that you will keep that in your heart, keep that in your mind. It's not just another day off, right? But it is an important memorial that we have. So thank you, Lord, for that. I also just want to recognize a, um, a few people in the church here real quick. Um, you know, I, I don't know exactly how long it's, it's been since we've been here. Two, two months, two and a half months, something like that. And I've gotten a chance to know a number of you. And, uh, and, and sometimes, you know, you, you kind of see people from a distance, but you don't really get to know their hearts very well. And being on staff, I've gotten a chance to know some of the staff. And, you know, our, our worship leader, Candace, man, you guys don't know the, the depths of her heart. Her devotion is just so dedicated to the Lord. It does. It shows in her music. And... And as I've gotten to know her and just hear her heart, I mean, she just, lo she doesn't long for publicity, for, for, you know, a face. She longs for the kingdom of God to come in the hearts of her students and, and to come in the hearts of, of our church here as we worship. And I just want to honor that. So would you guys give her a hand? I don't know if she's even in. There she is. Amen. And, you know, along with... Uh, with worship, you know, comes the rest of the team. We've got the rest of the team that's up here. And, uh, and maybe another day I'll honor you guys. But uh, they get a little bit honored just from, from being up there. But what I want to honor this morning um, is those that are back here. Because um, they, they don't get the, the public recognition. Um, but Caleb is back there. He's been working. I don't know how long you've been. How long have you been back there, Caleb? Three, three months, is that what you said? About three months? And so he, Ken has been working with Caleb, training him. He basically runs it all by himself, all the sound, making sure that you know, things are, are programmed the way they need to, cutting off effects when they need to be cut off, and, and just doing all the things that are necessary. And Caleb, it's not an easy job, and, and you only normally get noticed when things go bad. So today, <laughs> I just want to recognize you. Ken has just been leading for a long time, bringing the church up to the, the standard that we have now in so many ways, sound, media. Um, it's Lindsay, is that right? This back there, Lindsay's doing the words this morning. Brandon's doing the lights this morning. Um, we've got an amazing team all the way around. And uh, sometimes it's just important to, to recognize those that are behind the scenes. So could we just give them a round of applause? <laughs> and then uh, one just quick announcement before I get into the message is um, we are going to be doing a little bit of a connection group sort of thing during the summer. Um, this summer. And so I know that, you know, summertime is especially in Colorado. So many of us are, are wanting to get a chance to enjoy the, the good weather, get out into the mountains and the lakes and, and do some stuff. And so um, I'm wanting to do a connection group um, this summer that's not necessarily a, like it builds one upon another. And if you, if you miss one, you're going to feel like you're left out. I want to um, kind of open something up so that, you know, whenever you're available, if you'd like to come and, and just stay connected, stay connected as a group, stay connected to the Lord, be inspired in your walk with the Lord, you know, further than just on Sunday and continue to get to know one another. And so I'll be opening up some more details about that in the coming weeks. About mid-June, we'll probably kick that off. Uh, my wife and I are going to lead that and we're just going to do it here at the church. 
And then um, also, um, Ed Squires um, is not here today. He's out of town I'm traveling for business. But Ed has got on his heart to take some of the resources in the books that, that we've used as a staff, that they've used in leadership at the board, and, and to unpack some of those um, with those of you that are interested. And so it's kind of, for those of you that this, you, know, you want to seek, you want to get a little bit deeper, it's, it's a sort of a book club sort of thing that he wants to do um, this summer. And so it's going to be, uh, if I understand correctly, it's going to be a once a month thing where you, if you sign up, you, you get the list of books. Uh, you'll hit the first one, and then during the, the first month, you'll read that book. And then at the end of the month, that group's going to come together and just really go deep into what they learn through that. And so Ed will probably give us some more details on, on that in the coming weeks too. But uh, I'm excited. we got some good things coming up. Amen? Um, I, I think it's important that we, we sow and we work hard during the summer, um, even though summer sometimes are light for church because everybody's kind of doing stuff and taking vacations because in the fall, man, the, the fruit just shows. Amen? All right, would you stand with me this morning? I want to turn to the book of Ephesians to start us off. So Ephesians chapter 1. This morning I want to talk to you about igniting passion in your walk with God. And I don't know about you, but there's so many times in my life where I have felt just the downward pull of life that pulls me down to a place of what I call just kind of an average walk with the Lord, or maybe even less than an average walk with the Lord. How many of you have ever experienced something like that, where it's just kind of, you know, man, just this average place? So this morning, I want to help to ignite your passion for God, bring you back to the place that He longs for you to be. And I know that you, if you're a believer, that you long to be. And so I want to just start with a, a passage I'm sure most of you are pretty familiar with. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 through 18. It says here, Therefore I also, this is Paul speaking, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. And, and church, I, I feel like that's us, right? I mean, if you're, if you're a believer, if you've got faith, Paul's speaking to you right here. After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I do not give cease to giving thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And we could go on because this is such a rich book, but I'm going to stop there for today as it just kind of gives us a, a preview of the, of the heart of Paul, of the heart of the Lord that, you know, we start with a place of, of faith in him. We start with a place of, of trusting in him. And yet Paul says there's more. I pray for the revelation to open up. I pray for your hearts to open up to experience the more of God. Like the songs we were singing this morning, Lord, I, I, I cry out for nothing more than you. Amen? You may be seated. Um, please uh, keep Pastor Rick and Julie just in your heart and your prayers as they're not here with us this morning. They, they are getting a chance to um, just do, do something fun. Isn't it nice to have a pastor that can go do something fun? Um, if you haven't had a chance to see uh, some of his videos on Facebook, he's out there just wiping out the balloons. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, when we first were coming up to, to check out the church two months ago, um, he invited us to one of the, the shooting events, and we got to go and, and see guys in action. Uh, and it, it is so cool. It is really neat. So I'm glad he's getting a chance to kind of get filled up doing some of the things that he loves to do. Uh, and then, if you weren't here last week, he mentioned that um, he and Julie are going to be going to New Zealand uh, for a couple weeks and teaching um, a Bible school of people that are ready to be pastors, that, that want to grow um, over there in New Zealand. So, man, that's so exciting that, you know, our pastor has the privilege of being asked to come and go to New Zealand. Um, I think he's going to need to take me next time to, to go to New Zealand. <laughs> and so thank you guys for coming this morning and getting a chance to listen to the word. So, you know, we, we start off here in the book of Ephesians. There is a, another passage that says that Jesus has all authority and all power on heaven and on earth that's been given to Jesus. He sounds like a guy that'd be good to know. Amen? And, you know, I think about who Jesus is, what he's done in my life, what he's done in so many of your lives. And, and the truth is that the world needs Jesus. Can I get an amen on that? America needs Jesus, right? I mean, America needs more of Jesus. We, we desperately need it. Colorado needs Jesus, amen? Northern Colorado. 
Wellington, our community, Fort Collins, Cheyenne, they desperately need Jesus. And as I've been getting to know some of you, I've been hearing some of your stories and some of the things that are happening in the schools. And it's obvious that we need Jesus at a deep root level. Our children need Jesus in our community. Our parents need Jesus. You know, my friends need Jesus. Amen? My family desperately needs to understand Jesus, to have Jesus fully dwelling in their hearts. And you know, the, the solution to these things, do you know God's method of delivering Jesus to the community, of delivering Jesus to the world? Do you know what it is? Let's take a look real quickly at Jesus' prayer that he prayed in the book of John. John chapter 17. Turn there with me if you have your Bible would like to read along with me. Otherwise, this one's just real short. You can just listen. But John chapter 17, 20, as he begins his prayer, he, he actually gives us a key here to how the world hears. John 17, 20, he says, I do not pray for these alone, meaning those that are currently his disciples, but also for those who will believe in me. And how? Through their word. That's awesome. So that's number one. His plan is that the world's going to hear through our lives, through our words. That's how the world's going to hear. That's how the community is going to hear. That's how our family is going to see Jesus, is through you and your spouse leading the way. And Jesus is on board with you. He's there to pray with you. He's already prayed for you, and he continues to intercede for us. Amen? So through the word of those who believe, through the church, that is the gathering, um, but it's also, like you guys know, it's you and it's me. But isn't it true that people don't always want what they need? They don't always want what they need. They want what they want. They don't always want what they need. You ever find yourself in that position? I don't always want Brussels sprouts, right? My wife knows I've actually kind of banned them from our house because I just grew up and we had them all the time and they just, I just didn't like them, you know? They're good for you from what I hear, you know, right? I, I should want them because they're good for me, but I don't, I don't feel like I have this need. You know, but I, I know when I, go, when I go Christmas shopping, every year I go Christmas shopping, and I don't like to shop. I don't like stores. I'm probably kind of a typical guy in that fashion. I don't really like to, to go out and, and go shopping for stuff. But Christmas shopping, I kind of enjoy because I start thinking about, you know, my kids and my family. But then this funny thing happens. I start seeing all this stuff that's out there, all these cool gadgets, right? And I start having this like want, like, man, I need that, right? I need that technology. I didn't even know it existed, but now suddenly I want that, right? I need that. And there's a truth to that that's important for us as believers to understand, and that is that we want what appears to satisfy and looks good. There, there's just a, a simple principle that God's built into each one of us. It's, it's just kind of our nature that we want what appears to satisfy and what looks good. And individually and corporately, we are the most attractive to the world when we're on fire for God. We, we want the world to want Jesus. Amen? We look at the book of Acts, right? We see this just building of, of people as they watched the disciples, as they watched the church, as they saw what God was doing. And they were like, I got, I, I got to explore this. I got to come check this out. I got to see what's going on. This God is just, he's raising people from the dead. He's healing people. I mean, it's just incredible. The world began to desire for God. And they came in in droves and multitudes, 3,000 in a day, 5,000 another day. And I believe that this is true. I believe that the Lord has put this in my heart. I believe it's so true that individually and corporately, we're the most attractive to the world when we're on fire for God, not when we're average. I think our kids will get the best example of Christ when we are passionate for Him, not just when it's just something we do once a week. Amen? Part of what I want to do here to start with is, is just to help build in us the why for why it's important for us to be on fire for the Lord. The why for why it's important for us to, to have a passionate walk with God. Because it isn't something that just necessarily happens. Although oftentimes the way that it begins is that the Lord takes initiative, right? He took initiative and he won your heart and brought you to him. How many of you can, can remember when the Lord pursued you and brought you to, to him and it just filled you with right the, the wonder and the beauty and the passion for God? 
It was incredible. And, and yet, most of us have not been able to maintain that. And most of us have not been able to stay there. And so this morning, I want to talk a little bit about why. Why that happens. How is it that we, we end up kind of coming down from where I think that we should try to be pursuing to a place of, the, of average, or even less than average, where we begin to even lose interest in the gospel. How many of you have ever found yourself losing interest in the gospel before? I'll be honest. There's been times in my life where I, I've kind of I've had to question myself, like, what in the world is going on here? It's not just human nature, but there's also an enemy that's at work, right? Trying to get in here and destroy the, the hearts of the people of God. Amen. And so this morning, let's get a handle on this here. So it's, it's not just the world that needs Jesus, though. It's not just my family. It's not just the community. I need Jesus, right? I mean, you individually need Jesus because our lives, if we really look at our lives, they're never better than when we are fully surrendered to the King. I need as much of Jesus as I can possibly handle. And I hope you feel the same way. Have you ever noticed that when I'm filled with God, my marriage is stronger? That I'm able to lead my kids better? Miracles tend to happen and I make better decisions and I see the abundance of God. And yet on the other hand, have you ever noticed that when I'm not filled with God, and hopefully this is, is you as well as me, but my marriage seems to break apart. My kids tend to be terrors. I can't seem to see God in work. I make stupid decisions and my finances break. And of course, I'm not talking about my oldest kids. <laughs> but you know, isn't it amazing how life goes better when we are passionately connected to the King? And so church this morning, let the presence of the Holy Spirit just come, even now as I'm speaking and teaching, and just fill you with that passion, that conviction that, Lord, I want the more of you. Teach me how to, how to get that. And the way, and here it is, the way that I get more of Jesus is through my passionate pursuit of Jesus. The way I get more of him is my passionate pursuit of Jesus. I've heard it said that we have as much of God right now as we want. And sometimes that can be a hard truth to consider. That my walk with the Lord is a reflection of what I currently want. But you know the good news is that we can actually turn on our wanters in the right direction. We can turn our desires on in the right direction. And so today I want to talk to you a little bit about how things, how things break apart, and next week we're going to get in a little bit more deeply into how, how do we turn things on here again. So I need as much of Jesus as I can handle. The world and my family and friends are in desperate need of Jesus. The way that myself and others get more of Jesus is through my passionate pursuit of Jesus, yet there is this thing that I call life's gravity that tends to just kind of pull our walk with him down. The enemy comes in and he desires for us to, to be at a place of, of complacency and averageness. He's okay if the church believes in God. Even the demons believe in God. But let the church not be this radical force of passionate believers that are making a difference in the lives of other people. So many of us tend to find ourselves at this place of average. But you know, average is not notable. The Bible, the history books, right? They're not filled with the average person. They're filled with those that were amazing. The Bible's filled with those that were filled with God. And here's the good news, though, is that I think sometimes some of us can, can look at some of those people and kind of say, that's, I mean, that's not me, right? I'm not amazing. I'm, I'm just a ragtag type of person. But when we look at the gospel, we see something really powerful. That Jesus took a ragtag bunch of people and he lit them on fire with the possibility and power of the kingdom. And today, we have the church that we have because they listened to the Lord. Because they let the Holy Spirit fill their lives to overflowing. And they pursued his kingdom until the end. And today, we, we look back 2,000 plus years later and marvel at the moment when Jesus changed history. You know, the normal pattern for most of us is that at one point, God's lit us on fire. God, God picked us up out of our mess, and he canceled our sin, and we felt the impact of that, and he lit us on fire. Or, and or, you know, we got filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, the, the Spirit of the Lord came, came upon us in such a powerful, tangible way. We felt his presence, and, and our, our journey with him just came alive again. And we don't know exactly what happened, but we find ourselves in this place of average. And so I want to talk about two aspects of the journey downward, kind of ca catching. Sometimes if we don't understand, we can't fix it. And so this morning I want to give you two specific ways 
that I, I think the Lord has shown me that, that this happens, that we begin to drift from the Lord. And I didn't mean for them to rhyme, but it just kind of came out. They don't rhyme. They start with the same letter. So anyway, they're, they're boredom and burnout. Everybody say that with me. Boredom and burnout. So first of all, as I look at, at burnout, let me start here. I want to look at the example of Mo Moses' father-in-law as he counsels Moses in Exodus. So Exodus chapter 18. I'll give you a second to turn there. Moses, um, at this point, has led the Israelites out of Egypt. Um, they've seen all the miracles of the Lord and, and this sort of thing. And now they, they've come into the wilderness, out of Egypt. And, uh, and, and Moses finally gets back in contact with his wife's dad. And uh, Jethro was an incredible uh, man of God. He, he was an incredible leader, as we see here. As he could see some things that were going on and offered advice to Moses. You think about that? Like Moses needed advice. And, and I mean, we look at Moses as like, I mean, you can't get any closer than Moses, right? I mean, he, he saw God face to face. I mean, that's kind of the relationship that he had. And that was in the Old Testament. This is incredible. So, so Exodus chapter 18, verses 13 through 18, we get a quick picture here. And it says, And so it was on the next day that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood before Moses from morning until evening. So when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did for the people, he said, what is this thing that you're doing for the people? Why do you alone sit and all the people stand before you from morning until evening? And Moses said to his father-in-law, because the people come to me to inquire of God. It's a noble purpose. Do you see that? And when they have difficulty, they come to me and I judge between one another and I make known the statutes of God and his laws. So Moses' father-in-law said to him, the thing that you do is not good. Both you and these who are with you will surely wear yourselves out. For this thing is too much for you, and you are not able to perform it by yourselves. This is, I, I think, a, a really good example for us to see that even those that are, you know, chiefs and amazing captains in the faith, if they're not careful, and I think this is awesome because the Lord intervened. The Lord brought someone to intervene so that he didn't end up in a place of burnout. Because, man, what would the Bible look like if after this, you know, Moses pulled the stunt like Noah did, right? Noah got done with the flood, had a little bit of maybe some burnout or something going, and he started, I, I need to get some beer. I need, to, <laughs> I need to get some alcohol and kind of tone things off here a little bit, right? And then the Lord restored him after that. But imagine if Moses, after all of this, had burnt out and decided, to, man, I just can't handle this anymore. You know, so many times it's, it's the intensity of life that we're, we're not paying attention to. And the intensity of life builds and builds and builds to the point that we start kind of going, well, I don't, I don't have time for the Lord today. I, you know what? I don't, I don't have time to, to go to church today to, to stay a part of that connection group, to stay a part of the things that continue to feed us. And so instead of staying in that place of, of reception where the Spirit of God's filling us and we're pouring out, and He's filling us and we're pouring out, we get to the place where all we're doing is pouring out. All we're doing is pouring out. All we're doing is pouring out. And eventually, inside of us, it feels like something kind of breaks. You know, Elijah experienced burnout after the victory on Mount Carmel. And I think this is another aspect. It's kind of a one-time, super intense. You know, he's up there on the, with the prophets, and he's calling down the, the power of God. And God answers his prayer. He even ends up in this massive victory, right? But then right after that, he begins to, to kind of crumble. The, the intensity of all of that happened and he, he wasn't able to stay at a place of, of full connection with the Lord. And he's complaining. He's at a place of, kind of like a place of burnout as he's complaining to the Lord. Lord, there's, there's none other. I'm the only one left. And yet the Lord's going, man, you, your perspective is off. You don't realize that there are so many other people that I've already chosen out there that have chosen me as their king. And so we've got to be careful that we, we keep track of this. So burnout comes from too much. I just want to kind of keep that in your head. Burnout comes from too much. And so that's a, a red flag that you need to be thinking about in your own journey. Uh, whether you're at a place of average right now, and, and as you start working on igniting your passion for the Lord again, or maybe you're currently at that place of, you know, man, I just, every prayer I throw up just seems to explode with the power of God. That's where we want us to be, amen? But burnout comes from too much. And one of the lessons I know I've learned for me personally is that don't make decisions when I'm tired. Man, I sometimes have the most stupid emotions when I'm tired. And so I just kind of finally learned, I'm like, all right, babe, we're, we're done talking about this right now because I can tell I'm tired, wrong emotions are coming out here, so let's just take a time out. Real briefly, I want to talk about just some, some counterbalances with burnout. And 
And one is, and we're going to get into this in more detail next week, but just real quickly, one is that, you know, mentorship is one of the things that I see when it comes to burnout. You know, Moses had his father-in-law come and give him mentorship, give, give him a new strategy. So if you find yourself at a place where life just feels like too much, you need to start talking to people. Maybe you need to talk to your spouse. Maybe you need to talk to your pastor or someone who you feel like has experienced some of the similar things that you have and gain some counsel for them. What are the strategies that they've used to, to implement things in their life to work? Um, and I want to look at, at one more example here from Luke chapter 7 of John the Baptist. And I want you to see an aspect here that can be super powerful when it comes to burnout. Um, John the Baptist, you know, Jesus spoke of John and said, you know, there's none greater than John. And yet, John got to an interesting place. In Luke chapter 7, um, John has been faithfully serving. He has um, executed the Lord's word to, to bring about Jesus, to notify uh, Jerusalem and, and all of Israel that this is the Messiah. Um, Jesus has, has moved in his ministry. Miracles are happening. People are coming to him in droves. And yet, you know, one of John's standards that he held out there as a prophet uh, totally counteracted with uh, one of the kings of the time. He, he kind of slammed this relationship with his king's sister's wife. And, and the king got furious. His wife, his, his, his wife got furious that biblically he should not have had. And so the uh, wife was like, I don't like this guy, John. We've we got we to take care of this guy, John. And so they, they went after John. They arrested John. They brought Now John's in prison. And in John's mind, and this is another thing about, about burnout that happens, is, is in our mind we get to this place where things are not happening the way we thought they should have. I've been serving the Lord, I've been, you know, coming to church, I've been doing the things that I'm supposed to do, and, and Lord, why does it just seem like things are not happening? Why are things not getting better? Why are my finances not getting better? Why are my kids not changing the way that I, I think that they should change, you know? Why, why is this relationship just still in turmoil? And John the Baptist, I think, can, can kind of relate to that. He's going, I'm in prison. I thought that your kingdom was coming, right? I thought, I thought you were going to change the world and I was going to announce it and, you know, I don't know what is exactly all of his feelings were, but some of it is evidenced here because when we look at, at John chapter 7, in verse 19, we see this. It says, and John, calling two of his disciples to him, he sent them to Jesus. Now, John's in jail. He's in prison. He sends his disciples to Jesus and he, and he tells them to ask this question. Are you the coming one or do we look for another? Isn't that interesting? Isn't that profound to see, again, like Moses, you know, a, a patriarch, someone who's been on fire for God, hears from God, you know, sees in the spiritual realm the Spirit of God come upon Jesus. He, he knows if he looks back, he knows that Jesus is the Messiah, but he's not experiencing what he thinks that he should be experiencing. And oftentimes this can cause burnout in our walk with the Lord because we think something should be happening, and it's not happening. How many of you have ever been physically hurt in pain. Maybe it's, it's cancer disease. I lost my dad to cancer when I was 15. And we were in a Bible-believing faith, you know, type of church that believed and saw miracles and healing. And for two years since we knew about the cancer, you know, we prayed, we fasted, we got together and prayed, pastors prayed, we anointed oil. And yet two years later, when I was 15, he passed away. And there's a, a part of me that was like John going, you know, God... What's going on here? I mean, I know I'm not perfect, but I thought your word was true that you, you healed those, you know, you, that you love. And it was a confusing time. And so I can relate to, to John as he, as he knows in his heart. He knows in his mind, but yet there's still this place where he says, are, are you the coming one or do we look for another? But look at what happens here. It says, when, when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has, has sent us. And they asked this question, are you the coming one or do we look for another? And that very hour... Jesus cured many infirmities, afflictions, and evil spirits. And to many blind, he gave them sight. And Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things that you've seen and heard. That the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Oftentimes we don't understand what God is doing or Bigger than that, why he's not doing. Does that make sense? Why is he not doing this thing that I think that he should do? This thing that I'm, I'm believing. Sometimes it's just a, a game period of waiting. And I could tell a lot of personal stories about that. But for the sake of time, let me bring us back to this. That 
Part of what we need to do when we're in a place of, of burnout, in a place of questioning, maybe it's too much of life, maybe it's too much of, of, the, of our expectations that are not coming to pass, is we've got to remind ourselves of the goodness of God. We've got to surround ourselves with the stories of victory. Maybe we're not experiencing it in our own lives right now, but we've got to get connected with those that are. You know, it's amazing. Nowadays, in the, in the times that we have, there's no excuse for not filling yourselves with the testimony of the Lord because you can just go to YouTube and type in any kind of testimony on healing or whatever, and there's just thousands all in, in America and in other countries. I mean, God is on the move. He is doing some radical, radical miracles, bringing Muslims to him, bringing, you know, other tribes in Africa that have never heard Jesus, healing the blind, healing the deaf. I mean, it's just amazing some of the things that God is doing. And he's doing it today. It's not 2,000 years ago, but he's doing it today. And you know, this morning, um, I, I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, you know, is there anything that you want to do this morning? Is there, is there any, anybody in particular that you want to touch? And, and I've seen the Lord many times um, speak to me about something that he wants to do in someone's life. And it come to pass on the spot. So I just was kind of listening to the Lord. And earlier today, I felt like the Lord said that there's somebody uh, in church today that's got some pain in their elbow that they've been dealing with that he just wants to heal right here. And then during worship, I was just seeking the Lord and I felt like the Lord said there's, there's some people that have got back pain um, that he wants to touch this morning. And so if that's either, either one of you, if you're here this morning and you're dealing with either elbow pain or some back pain, would you, would you just kind of give me a little, you know, hey, that's me. So I can just, amen, amen. All right, a few of you here, four, five, six, anybody else? Don't miss out. <laughs> amen. So so guys, right now, if you would, um, raise your hand up one more time. And then those that are around you, would you just kind of extend a hand towards the people right now that have their hand up. And let's just call forth the blessing, anointing, and healing of the Lord upon these people. Father, right now in Jesus' name, Lord, you are so good. Lord, your power is so available to us. Lord, that's what we read in Ephesians this morning. Lord, that the, the, we pray that the revelation would open up. Lord, your power is here this morning. Your spirit is here this morning. And so, Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, we just believe for these people. We just ask that the pain that they're experiencing would be gone in Jesus' name. We command that pain to be removed from their bodies, from elbows, from backs now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, what I want you to do is, um, throughout the rest of the service, if that was you, and, and you can tell that that pain is gone, I'm just kind of raise a hand again, just at any point during the service, just kind of raise a hand and let me know that the anointing of the Lord has, has done some work in you. Amen? Amen? And then for anybody else that's here, that's sick, that's, that's experiencing pain, just let the presence of the Lord come upon you this morning and heal you. Amen? Let's let his power just refresh us. And so the first aspect here we're looking at is burnout. The second one is boredom. And you know, when I think of, of boredom, I think of the nation of Israel. And, uh, I'm, I, for the sake of time, I'm not going to read it. I was going to read a passage from Ezekiel. But if we think about just the, the nation of Israel in general, in the, in the Bible, we see this constant place of, of them, you know, needing help. They're just a mess. God comes in and saves them, gives them a, a new judge, a new leader, gives them his spirit. He brings them out of the muck, and, and then they're on fire for him. They love him. They, they want to obey the word. And then, you know, the very next king, the very next leader, you know, leads them astray, or the people themselves just fall astray. And it's this vicious cycle that tends to be more down than it is up. We do see some ups, but it tends to be down and I think that tends to be a lot of a reflection of our own lives, right? As we're, our, our passion for God tends to be more down than it is up. And may today be part of instigating that to change, that we can have more ups than downs. Amen? As I look at, at um, the nation of Israel, it reminds me of, of America in a lot of ways. You know, they, they, every time they had a time of influence and the blessing of the Lord, they allowed sin and other gods to lead them astray. And part of what I want to say, church, to us this morning is that I think part of that comes from um, just kind of boredom. There, there's not enough challenge. There's not enough focus to our lives. Oftentimes this is what happens when prosperity hits a country is that people kind of settle in to the goodness of the Lord. They get heavier, right? They, they begin to just enjoy life and, and they don't add to the, the challenge. It's, the church always thrives when there's persecution. But anytime there's abundance, the church tends to get 
week. It tends to get lackadaisical. And church, we need to continue to work out. We need to continue to, to push forward. We need to ask the Lord, Lord, what's the next thing that you have for me? You know, in America, we've got a lot of first world problems. If we look at demographics, you know, one of the things that, that bothers the church is to see, um, you know, the gay and lesbian type agenda just be so strong, so prevalent, so pushing on America. And yet that's a first world problem. In countries that are still developing, the, the percentages are so minute of, of this type of thing that's happening, this pressures that you know, kids are feeling and governments are feeling because they're, they, they're working for their survival. You know? they're, they're just trying to make ends meet. They're seeking the Lord for literally their daily bread. And yet the church of God is thriving in those countries. And in America, it continues to be stagnant. You know, every denomination except for one has decreased in America. Every denomination, except for one, has decreased in America year after year after year. Attendance, membership, salvations, baptisms. And praise God, do you know what the one is that's been growing? It's this one. And that's an honor to be able to be a part of the Assemblies of God and, and see that the Lord is moving not only internationally, but in America as well. That's a powerful thing that we can say that we have at least some connection to the Assemblies of God. You know, there's another interesting thing in America. There's a video game addiction. There's some other um, kind of Western type countries uh, or countries that are more technologically advanced that, that have this. I think it was in India I first saw that it's literally been labeled an, an addiction now. It's, it's a, a condition, video gaming addiction. This aspect of, of boredom leads us to get into all kinds of other messes. If we don't have a purpose for our life, if we don't have a challenge to, to grab a hold of, then we tend to just look around and, and find what, what do I want to be interested in? What fills me? And you know, I do believe that part of the purpose of life is for us to grow and to expand, but not for us, for the kingdom, for his sake, amen? And so we need challenge. Boredom comes from a lack of focus or challenge. In other words, distraction. And, you know, Jesus gives us, I think, the most amazing example of keeping his life on track. I mean, if Jesus didn't fulfill what he was supposed to fulfill, we wouldn't have anything, right? Where would we be if Jesus either burned out or ended up in a place of boredom and just lost his focus? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the Son of God, Jesus Christ? You know, he's got all this fame that's happening. You know, people are following him everywhere. Money's coming in, I'm sure. People just want to bless him. They want to host him. You know, all this stuff. And pretty girls are wanting to come get close. I, I know that's how it was. Don't you? Don't you understand? I mean, there, people are in droves wanting to come to him. Whenever someone's moving in the power of the Lord, it is super attractive. And, and, you know, the women are coming in. What if he had gotten just distracted? Man, I think I want to have a family, right? I mean, wouldn't it have been nice if, if Jesus had a family? And I mean, for his sake, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't it have been, you know, he, he didn't have a natural family, but because of what he accomplished, he was able to have the most massive family that ever existed through being able to adopt us into his kingdom. Amen? Amen? He had the most important purpose in history. And, and he regularly took time to get centered with the Lord, to get away from everything. You know, you can't say that your life is more busy than Jesus, right? <laughs> I mean, every chance that he got, right? Every chance that he got, the word is clear. If he went to another city, he would even go to a secret place to try to kind of hide and get away, and people would see him, and in droves, they would start coming to him. They wanted to be touched. They wanted to be healed. They wanted to be filled from the Messiah. And yet, he found a way to stay focused with the Lord, to, to know, God, what, Father, what's the next, I've gone to this city, and we've accomplished what we needed to in this city. Lord, I've won, I've won six disciples, who's the next disciple, right? And the Lord would give him, you know, a, a mental picture of where to go. All right, Lord, I see him, he's under a tree, and he's, and he's sitting there waiting, and he's got certain things going through his mind, and so, you know, we're going to go over there, and when we find him, I'm going to reveal the revelation that the Lord spoke to me. And he's going to be like, holy cow, this guy is the real deal. This very possibly is the Messiah. Amen? 
You know, as I look at the, at the disciples, one of the things that Jesus did for the disciples is he didn't just carry them along with him. He, he wanted to give them a challenge. And so one of the things that he did is he continued to give them new challenges, right? He, the, the people were hungry. Instead of just solving the problem, right? He initially wanted to turn it upon them to start thinking and dreaming about what to do. And then he multiplied food in front of them to, to see the possibilities. Eventually, he sent them out to go into their own mission field. It was this constant aspect of challenge preparing them for the day that, that he would be gone. And that's part of what we need to, to carry for ourselves is to take on the next challenge, to get filled with his power. So today, just in summary, God's kingdom will be established by those who are passionate for God's presence and power. And we owe it to our families. We owe it to our community and even ourselves to ignite our own passion for Jesus. Do you really want your life to end up where it's going to end up if you're not fully connected to the Lord the way that you need to be? I know I don't. My life goes the wrong direction when I'm not fully connected to Him. And so this morning, would you just stand with me as we, as we wrap up here? I just want to give an opportunity, if you're in one of those two categories today, to, to just unite with you um, in prayer. And so, Father, right now, um, I just ask for your spirit to just come, Lord, your anointing to just come to, to break the yokes of bondage, to free people from fears, to free people from the things that have held them back. And church, if, if you're here today and you're finding that that burnout has been something that's really affected you in your journey. You've got some things that have happened or not happened or, or just the busyness of life has been so rampant upon you that you found yourself drifting. You found life's gravity pulling upon you. Would you just lift a hand right now and just partner with you in prayer? Amen, amen. Thank you for so many of you. Anybody else? Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. And if, if you're here and... And you find that, that maybe it's the boredom side of things that, you know, you, you've, you've not, maybe you've lacked the challenge of life and you've gotten distracted and you know it's time to get back on track. I just want to give you an opportunity to put a hand up right now too so we can just join with you in prayer. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just come to you right now. Holy Spirit, we come to you right now. Lord, we just lay ourselves before you. Lord, you are the one that can solve all of our problems. Lord, you are the one that can make life so amazing. Lord, you are the one who longs for us to be as close to you as possible. You're the one who longs to fill us with your power. And so this morning, right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, I just ask, Holy Spirit, that you would come and you would touch each one of these people every person in the building today, but especially these that are just saying, I, I need to, I need to step back in. I need to step back in. Lord, fill them right now with your spirit. Open their hearts and their eyes. Draw them to that place where their desire is on fire again. Their desire says, I, I've got to make the change. I've got to find the strategy. I've got to make sure that I'm, I'm spending time with you, Lord. Fill us with your fire this morning, Lord. Fill us with your fire. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Um, Candace, where are you? Why don't you come on up here? And today is Vision Sunday, so Candace is going to talk to us a little bit about that. Real fast. Uh, we won't keep you, but uh, today is Vision Sunday, and it's our day to just give towards the AMP. And so um, if you want to ready that now, our ushers are going to get ready here. Um, but one thing I just wanted to say is... Uh, don't forget that we have our out of school bash and we're trying to reach 500 kids this year and so uh, if you're able at all to give give your regular vision offering but if you say hey I have like five bucks I could throw towards um, the out of school bash we'd really appreciate that and then if anybody has a generator we need probably four generators um, one of our things is so big <laughs> that it needs three outlet, three separate circuits just for itself. And so, um, unfortunately, we don't have like seven cir different circuits at the AMP, so we need some generators. So if anybody has some generators we could use on Thursday morning, that would be fabulous. Um, I can take them anytime this week if you don't mind dropping them off, and we'll give it right back to you in the same condition that you left it with us. But um, so if you don't, if, if you're ready to give, our ushers will come forward. And again, we just thank you, church, so much for giving. You guys are such a blessing. We had 
um, last month when we talked about out of school bash and how people could help um, people came up to me and literally were just handing me cash and so we got all of our big prizes the Apple watch and the airpods and the cash all taken care of and so that's super exciting and and so like I said we still have about twenty five hundred dollars in cost but um, our church is blessed and pastor said it doesn't matter we're just gonna take care of it but if you can give that'd be amazing so ushers come forward and let's just uh, receive this and we'll get you guys going on your day Lord, we thank you so much for today, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to give, Lord, again to the AMP and, and what it means, Lord, not only to our youth, but to our community, Lord, and to all the different groups that meet there, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, that we get to help raise these kids in a way, Lord, that they would become world changers, Lord. So, God, we just thank you for this. Thank you, Lord, that you just bless those who are giving, Lord. Thank you for those who have offered to help and come just be a support, Lord. And we just love you so much in your name. Amen. So they're going to pass those. And um, Pastor Rick did a uh, cowboy church this morning, and they sent me a picture, and um, they had a good crowd. Um, last year he was doing cowboy church, and a lady had a heart attack right in the middle of it. So it kind of got interrupted. They had to call an ambulance. So this year he was hoping for, they were praying for no heart attacks. Um, so, um, so, but yeah, they had a great turnout this morning and they're doing good. Um, Crystal got to do the eliminator challenge last night, which was, um, kind of an extra special thing. And, um, I don't know how she finished and pastor, you can see on his Facebook, he posted a few videos of him flying around on his old guy. So, um, his old guy got a little bit sore, so he's going to bring in the new guy today. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes, but, uh, they're having lots of fun and reaching those cowboys for Jesus. And so um, thank you for letting them be gone. And Pastor Mark did a wonderful job, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. We're super blessed by the England family, and we're so happy to have them here and just getting to know them better and better. So, all right. And there's just a couple more rows. But... Yeah, if your kids don't go to the youth group, send them to youth. We're talking right now about beliefs and then building their foundation, asking them questions like, what, what do Christians believe? What do we believe about the Trinity? What do we believe? Who wrote the Bible? And, you know, your beliefs shape and form who you become. And if, if you don't stand for something, you fall for everything. And so we want our kids to not be falling for everything. We want them to have a good foundation so that way their house is built on the rock and not sand. So when they go through hard times and that water tries to wash away, um, um, they'll be a solid rock and it won't affect them. So, all right, let's just uh, stand and we'll close again. Lord, thank you for this wonderful service. Lord, thank you for the word that Pastor Mark brought us today about igniting our passion, Lord, and knowing how to stay away from burnout and boredom, Lord. And so we just thank you for all these things, Lord. Thank you for this time together as your church family, Lord. And we just thank you that everybody go and have a safe weekend and have a good time um, together, Lord. But that we would remember what this day, what this Memorial Day is about, Lord. Remembering those men and women who died so that we can have the freedom to come and worship you like we can, Lord. So we thank you for that, Lord. In your name, amen. Amen. Have a blessed day, church. We'll see you this week in midweeks or next Sunday.